So what is, I can't read it for you. What's the first agenda? Call to order, additions or deletions. Okay, do we have any additions or deletions? <laughs> Okay, hearing none, seeing none, I assume we do not. And the next is citizens' comments. Susie, or anybody else out there, care to comment on anything uh, that we are about to discuss this evening? I guess not. Old business. Update from uh, the Housing Working Group. Joe, I guess that's you. Why don't you take it from here? Yeah. Um, so could you stop sharing so I can share, please? Can we what? I'll bet. She wants to share. Are you all set, Joe? Yes. So I wanted to give you a preview of what's going to happen next week. So we are launching the Lease to Locals program next week. Um, and I wanted to give you a preview of what, what's going to happen uh, when people come to the, the website. And we will be announcing this on the town website in uh, Vermont Standard, on Listserv, and kind of do a, do a coordinated launch. We've been, so can you see my page? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we've been working really hard with Placemate to make all of what they do for other towns work with Woodstock. So you'll go to a page within their website that looks like this. Um, it explains what Lease to Locals is and how the program works. And then there's four, five steps that um, somebody who is interested needs to go through, and those are all explained. Um, the incentive amounts are explained, and then there's more frequently asked questions. Um, what will happen once somebody um, gets in touch with Lease to Locals is they'll take them through these five steps. Um, they'll be talking to somebody called Tamea, um, who will take them through everything, make sure they understand what the program is. They'll also help secure tenants. So in addition to uh, the property owner being able to rent, this is somewhere where tenants who need somewhere can also um, go to create a renter profile. See at the top, they can create a renter profile. Um, there you go. Um, so people who are looking can be on a list as well. And then there can be a, if there are sufficient people, there can be a little bit of a matching service so that um, a new landlord can get some support in finding their renter. And I just wanted to be here in case you had any questions. Are there any questions? Wait a minute. Let's ask for EDC members first. Uh, any questions from the EDC? Okay, mm -hmm. so hey, you want the microphone? Do people, um, wait a minute, wait a minute. My question is, every time you hear about an apartment uh, for rent, it's always no pets. And lots of people have pets. And, you know, are you allowing people to have, is, can this program say people are allowed to have pets? Because Flexibility of allowing. Yeah. So the, the choice of the tenant is entirely up to the landlord and the conditions that the landlord puts on, so long as they uh, don't um, mess up the fair housing laws of Vermont, they can do that. So there is no law that says you have to allow a dog. It's entirely up to the property owner. Thank you. Any other questions from anybody? Marion. 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 Um, Jill, I apologize if you've already talked about this. Do you want to talk a little bit about how, um, what the plan is to get the word out about the program? Because I think that's going to be critical. Sure. Um, we'll be, so I, most things will be happening on um, the 9th. So we'll be in Lister. We'll be in the Vermont Standard. They've, um, they've broken the story and then I'll do a press release. Um, we'll be on the town website, you know, on the homepage where there's a, those little posts. 
um, will be on Woodstock Vermont that Nikki does so that people who've asked for an email get an email. Uh, there'll also be a postcard mailing to property owners and then we'll just keep doing this. Thank you. Did that answer your question, Mary? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Larry, do I see your hand up? No. I just want to say thank you for putting this together for, as somebody who rents and is wanting to help out and get people, you know, and share. And um, it, it's really, it's a wonderful program. So, yeah. It, you know, yeah, it's great. And it's all ready to go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we need a trial person to take, to go through and make sure that all that, yeah, it would work. Yeah. We need to well, just make sure that all the theory works now. Yeah, and I'm not sure I'm going to be the right one because we'll see if if I tick all the boxes. But I have yeah. two people coming for from Mount from Montvert, and I don't fit in the Thompson program. So we'll see if, if we'll this see one works. works. Yeah, it'll be good to work it through, Deb. That would be helpful to us. Yeah, thank you. It's certainly yeah. going to be helpful to Montvert. It really is. Yeah, I'm excited uh, for them to come in. Yeah, we're excited about it. Um, any other questions? Okay, so the next item. Is um, one second, is please. The update from the tourism temporary working groups. Update from the tourism temporary working group. So we can go down um, from top to bottom here. It's if everyone remembers, it's the managing the impacts of tourism that we um, started with the the survey last fall and then the community meeting. And so we've got our groups, um, at least a couple EDC members and community members assigned. And um, if we wanna start with the food, we can just give a brief update. Sure, I can do that if you like. Um, uh, I should first start off by saying that there's a, a couple of community members who have reached out to want to join the uh, the group and at some point um, that may be something that's that would work, but right now um, I've been I've been working with Sam, uh, my daughter Sam and um, Stuart Matthews, and uh, I can give you an idea of what is happening now. I think it's important to mention that the purpose of this group is to mitigate the sufferings of the past of trying to feed our tourist population and not being able to. Um, so um, that's the primary focus of, of where we're at right now. So uh, some of the things that are happening is, for example, um, Sante Restaurant, I have been informed, is planning on opening um, through the weekends, through the summer and the fall this year. I think they opened sporadically last year, but this year I guess they're committed to an alternative menu and uh, different items that are more lunch oriented. Um, so that that's good news. Um, the Marbury Cafe, uh, is launching a food, uh, not a food, but a coffee trailer that we, we, I signed a lease for the property that was formerly Pie Restaurant across the street from the cafe. And we now have a trailer being built for us to our specs in Florida. They'll be ready in a few weeks or maybe even sooner. Uh, we're going to place it there and offer coffee and pastries and grab and go sandwiches and a few other items uh, during the high traffic times. Um, and there'll be Friday, Saturday, Saturday, and Monday. Um, Stuart and I are working um, on trying to develop mechanistry, we've given it a name like mechanistry place or mechanistry market. We've talked with uh, people about, uh, well, I've met with Casella trying to consolidate the trash 
uh, situation for all the stores back there. What we're looking for is setting up a food venue back there and the major stomach box would be parking. Um, I know Stuart has talked with the historical society and try to get something managed there. I don't think he was very successful with that, not initially, initially anyway. Um, another option is uh, I've been speaking with the village and the town about specifically identifying a section of Pleasant Street from, for example, the tip of Tribal Park over to uh, Eric Nesbitt's um, antique store. There are eight spots there. Well, there's room for eight spots, but they've never been identified and they've never been counted. There's a small sign there that says free parking. Now, for example, this weekend, there was the, uh, the Gladbach sale at the Masonic Temple, and those spots, well, that whole side of the street was used. But I don't think tourists understand that that's available because it's never been bought as parking spots. In other words, those white lines that say, hey, this is a parking spot. And the only sign there really is this small four by six sign that says free parking. So I've been, um, and I'll, that area has never been counted of what's available as parking spots in, in the village. So um, I've been speaking with the trustee and um, town manager, town planner about what all it really has to be done is identify those spots as parking spots. Just draw the lines. Cost us a little bit of paint. And then we've got eight additional parking spots. That would probably help, I hope, mitigate maybe possibly losing some spots on Mechanic Street that we can use for a food vendor. And what we the long-term plan is having a, a food vendor there. And if you want to dream on top of dreams, some type of maybe Italian restaurant that's on Central Street but has a rear entrance to the restaurant and have maybe some kind of patio thing out back, another food venue there probably, um, along with Au Comptoir, that, you know, that great little bar that's, that's, uh, that's on McKenna Street that's doing a great job. That would complement the whole thing. Um, so that's something else we're working on. Um, I personally think that if we can get those parking spots identified and used and people park up there and have to walk back into the center of town, they're going to go buy a couple of restaurants that they normally wouldn't if they parked up town. They'd have to go out by Malaza. And if we can get those parking spots, I plan on going and talking to David and say, what do you think? People are going to walk by. Maybe you can grab the fish and swim by. Um, that's an option. And um, the coffee shop will have more people coming by. Um, so, you know, those are some of the things I hope to get initiated and in actually working by the sum. That's the food work. Um, and I'm also, um, I'm not listed in this group, but I am on the um, food work group. And what we kind of decided was that Joe was going to work inside the village. And then um, I am, I'm working on um, options at, or talking to the organizers at East End Park, because that's obviously the, you know, that's a huge opportunity there. And it really helps spread things out. So um, I've talked to, to Ben Jervy, who's the um, owner of the um, space with the picnic tables, and they've got some things in mind, namely coming up um, at the end of the summer, um, some little stalls and whatnot for artisans and, and food um, purveyors, and um, also talking to um, Meg, Megan Pollock, who is on the East End Park um, planning group. So um, things are in the works. Obviously, this is the, the early end of things, but... Um, East End Park is a huge piece of, you know, that was just, that, that's kind of the spot. Personally, I'm, I'm feeling. Oh, hey, Ben. You, uh, sorry, ben, you want to chat? 
Oh, okay. okay, sorry, I don't want to put you on the spot, but Ben Jervy, he's the, one of the owners of the ahead, the, the, the um, fire away the land over there. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't need to take the stage or anything. Um, but if, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has. I'm also just juggling making dinner for my kids at the moment. So, sorry. Okay, cool. Thanks, Anybody man. have any questions for me, Greta, or Ben? Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. yeah isn't that exciting? I hope a lot of people do. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's right. Yep. Sure. Uh, I feel, I personally, I feel a little bit more confident or, uh, that about our food vending or food venue uh, situation this year than I have in past years. Um, if, you know, if things work out, we're going to do a better job of it than we've been in the past. Okay, the next one is crowds for, I mean, that's Deborah. Deborah, talk about crowds. Let's talk about crowds. Um, so we haven't met as a group. Uh, Scott, who is on the call, who's new to the area, did uh, get in touch with me through, um, uh, through I think it was um, John. And so we haven't, we haven't met yet. And so we, we definitely need to get that group together. And it's just been a busy time. But also, I think Susie's on the group too. Yes, Susie? Well, we can all... Um, meet up, uh, but I've been collecting data to start the conversation um, that's much more about kind of the laws of traffic um, to try to figure out, to bring to the group, to have some, you know, kind of um, chapter and verse of what is legal and what isn't legal to do as far as um, crosswalks and uh, how it functions in other towns uh, that is similar to this, because that's one of the main things that we've kind of zeroed in on is how do we control traffic during those those couple of times of year where if people are crossing the street constantly, the traffic never goes and, and we need to figure that out. Um, I also agree um, with what Greta said. I just think East End Park is gonna become a real uh, haven of activity and an answer to a lot of what's going on both for uh, food and for crowds and um, hopefully other things as well. So I, um, I think, you know, we need to talk a little bit about that to look into the buses and, and um, obviously Ben, I would love to have a conversation about that because I'm not sure that the answer to the buses are moving them down there when other things are going on. Um, that may just kind of again, create a whole different problem just on the other end of town. So, but it's something, it's something to discuss. Um, and um, so I'd be interested to kind of, kind of look at, at all of, of those things. Um, so that's, that's where I am right now is just a kind of data collection as far as that's concerned. Um, uh, Scott, do you have anything that you want to add? I mean, you're you're just starting here, and you you were interested in becoming part of the group. So I didn't know if you had anything that you wanted to add to it, or Susie, if you wanted to add to it prior to us all meeting. Scott, if if it's this Scott, um, I think I actually signed up for the other group. I think I signed up for information services. I think there was another Scott on last week's on last month's call. Um, yeah, I think it was um, Scott Smith. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, so Scott, if you have any thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have any suggestions here, but, um, okay. but thank you for asking. Um, oh, there you go. And yes. So, <laughs> wait, a wait a minute. No, Deborah's saying go ahead. Right. No, I wanted to say, Scott, did you have anything you wanted to, to finish up with that? Or, you know, he's, he's put himself on mute. Okay. Yeah, Susie. Um, yeah, so I sent the whole thing to John because um, did you get it? Did you get that? No. Okay. Um, I'll I'll because I, I mean I didn't even know that there was this this group was even this is why I came to figure out why this group wasn't meeting. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I've done some work on that. Well, I think we should compare some notes of what I've collected and you've collected. Um, uh, I think I have your number, Susie. Let me just give you a call and I can give you my email and just uh, set it, send it my way and we can start our conversations. Okay, parking in bathrooms is Larry and Todd. Todd's not here tonight, but maybe Larry has something to say. 
Um, Todd and I have met a couple of times uh, doing some brainstorming. Uh, Jeff Kahn has been added to our group. And uh, Jeff and I met for about an hour and a half the other day. So we're getting a lot of a lot of different ideas. Uh, we also, you may have seen in the listserv that uh, we solicited um, um, ideas from the public, and we we received oh uh, maybe a dozen um, uh, responses that were you know good good. Uh, there's good input there. Um, that's, that's I don't know. This isn't probably the time to go through some of the things we're toying with, but. Um, we do have several but, things. Right, and, I want to touch on a couple of things you think are, you know, kind of important. You can do that. Uh, well, um, first of all, we want to identify when the problem is. We're not, it's not absolutely clear. Um, um, you know, there's sort of sweeping generalizations of uh, summertime, foliage, whatever, but um, um, whether it's weekdays um, and whether it's weekends, whether it's specific, uh, uh, specific, weeks in foliage and of course um with special events so we just want to identify that um and one of the one of the uh one of the things that uh, actually jeff is really um keen on is to get some really good maps we went through all the places that there are to park that are um free in the town and it's it's actually fairly extraordinary actually you just joe you just identified eight more that i didn't even know about um nobody but knows have, about what's that nobody knows about them that's that's the issue yeah well there there are there there are a, a number of other ones um john asked us to to prioritize for the i guess in my words what's actually feasible and doable rather than pie in the sky like uh yeah. Um, so what we're we're trying to we're trying to come up with some some ideas. Um, I guess the most expensive one right now we're thinking of is maybe resurrecting that trolley that uh, we used to have years ago. You probably remember that, Joe, and having it at at specific times of the year going from uh, some of some of the places that we can identify. Obviously, East End, maybe the Ottaquichi Health Center parking lot uh, on weekends, um, some of the churches, whatever. Uh, I'm. In terms of um, uh, uh, toilets, uh, it's hard. It's hard. A, a, a signage is key. Um, we do have perfectly good toilets downtown. People don't seem to know it. Um, but um, then trying to do something East End Park again, we're getting into the feasible part. It's uh, it's very expensive. I actually contacted. I mean, we could, we can, you know, we can do porta potties. But I, I contacted a company. Oh, where are they? They're in, in nearby, but in New York State. That you know, do those, um, uh, those sort of fancy porta potties that you see at, at weddings and whatever, just to see if it was feasible. And they, they have not come back with a, with a price, but it looked like it was going to be. Uh, Pretty pretty expensive. In other words, trying trying to do something that was a little more classy than three or four porta potties. But um, so that's the type of thing we're 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 looking at. Um, what else? Yeah, that's about that's what well, we've been. Well, it sounds doing. like you guys have got a, a real good bite into it. That's great. Thanks, Larry. We, we the one the one thing I I noted um, as we go through this. Um, there's an awful lot of overlap in these these groups um, in terms of what you know what what answers we can come up with. So I just again encourage everybody on different groups to um, contact uh, the other groups to, to you know as you as you bump into things. Um, you you said a couple of things that are definitely uh, have to do with parking. Just you know a few minutes ago that that I didn't even know about. So anyway, yeah, that's, let's, that's let's cross great, let's cross pollinate as best we can. Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Larry. Thanks. Um, the next is I wanted to I wanted to go ahead. I wanted to ask a question or or something I wanted to bring up with crowds, but it really is the overlap with parking, um, with what's going to go on at um, at the uh, the Windsor a courthouse is moving to our town for a couple of years, right? And that should be starting in the fall, I believe. Um, while they um, 
redo the courthouse in Windsor. Um, so what that's going to mean is that we're going to have a lot of people coming there for all sorts of um, small trials and large trials. It's going to be a huge influx of people. It's going to be people, you know, uh, uh, it could be a different um, type of person coming through the town as well. Um, as far as, um, you know, if there's, you know, all the types of trials, whether it's drugs or whatever, is going to be coming through our town. Um, and I'm concerned about the parking for that and what that's going to um, do around the green. And I've been trying to get some answers from the Windsor Courthouse, trying to get some numbers of what it is that we're about, to, what, what is the influx? And nobody's been able to give me the answers on that yet. But I think, Larry, that might be something that we should. I think, uh, Deb, you know, on that particular subject, I think there was discussion. I think, was it here or? At, at a meeting in, uh, in the, at that they were the Windsor Courthouse was actually going to lease some of the parking spots in town for, for a certain amount of money. Definitely the ones behind the courthouse and some right. other things. so but if they, if they lease it that's still taking oh it, yeah, you're right. it's an addition. Whatever yeah, right. it is it's an addition. Well it's not taking any away from the courthouse though behind the courthouse because that is specifically identified, I think. But you're right about maybe around the green of other spots. What do you think, Larry? Well, I, uh, having just been through a jury draw, the, um, there can be 50 or 60 people at a jury draw. Um, wow. I mean, it's good at, at, you know, for a couple of days uh, during the beginning and ending of each se uh, session. Wow, this, that, yeah. could be, that could be chaos. Yeah, it's <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with and so I was wondering if there's a way that we could look at parking lots and 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 uh, that may be available at different times, you know, and that there may be a bus that needs to happen. I don't I don't know. I'm just saying it's uh, I can't get the numbers yet, but it feels like it's a crowd issue and a parking my, issue. My, you know what my my suggestion might be: get a hold of the police chief. You know, talk to Joe Swanson and yeah. see if he has any input or any ideas or any suggestions or any more knowledge than we do about what's being planned uh, regarding that. Beth has a question. Yes, Beth. Well, this has been discussed for a significant amount of time at the trustees meeting, I think in March, if not April. And I, people are kind of working at the same purpose, only multiple people, just what you said, Deb. So I think the, the best thing to do would be in touch to get in touch with Seton who has all of the information about how many spaces they're renting, what, I mean, they've, they've had multiple discussions with the courthouse and have proposed for the courthouse to buy X amount of parking spaces. I'm sure it's in the minutes, but it's also an ongoing discussion with the parking committee and the trustees. So do you think I'm worried about something that I shouldn't be worried about when it comes well, to- Well, I think there's a whole, I think the trustees have- Have handled it. Have, I think she's, yeah. she's suggesting probably there are answers out there uh, to questions you may have and the trustees may have the answers. Awesome. Or, Thank and, you, Beth. And, and or the police department. Yes. Yeah. Well, the trial There you go. So let's, let's, I think rather than us trying to speculate and uh, hang our hats on some rumors that we're hearing, just get a hold of Seton. She has the answers. And Joe, I'm sure Joe must know what's going on. Joe Swanson, the police chief. Yeah, I'll probably get more answers than I'm getting from Windsor. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. And Larry, I'll get in touch as well. Right. Okay. Uh, traffic and safety. That's Michael, who's not here. John, who's not here. So I am here, but we haven't been able to meet uh, yet, so we don't have much of a, a readout. But uh, as soon as John gets back to town, I'm uh, looking forward to setting something up with him and hopefully um, with the police chief or whomever on the town side. Because, again, I think I'll, we're going to run into this with some of our solutions, and we discussed this when we outlined it, that a lot of it is going to be required of either the trustees or – uh, the police or others uh, in their input. But uh, yeah, when John gets back, we can pick that conversation up. Great. Thanks, Michael. Information services, Marion. 
Yeah, so I will take total responsibility. We have not met. It's all my fault. Uh, Scott and I have been in touch by email. I recruited Scott, Deb. I got him. And uh, <laughs> and I have one other volunteer Hello. from town and then Beth. And so I've just emailed everybody to try to schedule a meeting. So I'm embarrassed to say we have not gotten started. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, and I'm sure you have more to say at the next meeting. Uh, propose this possibility of each group, recruit interested community members, prioritize the proposed ideas according to three criteria, ease of execution, cost, if any, value to three constituents, residents, visitors, and merchants, Inve investigate the most promising idea in greater detail, uh, for instance, cost estimate, implementation plan, including Who's responsible for what? That's a good one. Prioritize if necessary. And present recommendations in priority order to the EDC. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Um, okay, so proposed so schedule, recruit interest community members in April, which was last year. And as far as the food thing is concerned, um, as I identified earlier, you know, Sam's going to work with me, Stuart, and um, and maybe one other community uh, community member who uh, I haven't yet had the opportunity to get back to, but that is is uh, the status of the food the food program. <clears throat> Anybody else want to jump in on that? They can. The um, yeah. important thing is to. This is the goal for the next month, right? Yeah. <laughs> the goal for the month of April is expand the list of ideas and prioritize the ideas. So if you can do that and then come back with them on uh, on the next meeting, in the next meeting, that would be great. Um, I can't read that good or you can't. All right. So let's see here. <laughs> last of old business is funding for downtown beautification, lighting, flowers, Post in January by the chamber. So, um, well, I think what that what that means is we have promised the chamber that we would fund for their flowers. Um, I think was sale. Um, what else, Beth? Oh, the lights, and the lights, flowers, and the at the back, the yeah. liners for the back. Yes. Yeah. So, so um, I think we have. Is there a dollar amount affixed to that? Yeah, um, so it says the total budget for the project, which you are requesting EDC support, is 15000 but you're at best the amount that you're requesting us approve tonight is 11500 Correct. Okay. So we have to vote on that. But I spoke with John this morning, and I mentioned to him how we had discussed at length over the winter um, making sure that Teagle's Landing is maintained properly. And it really wasn't last year. And it hasn't been for the last couple of years. So as I mentioned at the last meeting, or maybe the meeting before, uh, I spoke with Cy Benoit, who is probably, in my opinion, the best of the best when it comes to that sort of stuff, um, has offered to maintain Teagle's Landing at its peak of beauty, <laughs> if you want to use those words, the best possible uh, foot forward for any visitor that comes into town, and I'm sure he would, for 500 bucks for the season. In other words, from starting now until fall, and including fall. So, you know, um, I said to John, we did talk about it, and we we thought it was a good idea, but for some reason it wasn't um, wasn't in the budget, and it got skipped for you know I, in a reason I can't think of. <clears throat> we really, really should do this, and he totally agreed. So um, again, we'll we'll either attach it to what Beth wants, or we can vote on it separately. It'd be five hundred dollars. To maintain, oh, first of all, going in and getting it in shape, getting it to a place that it really looks great, and then keeping it like that for the rest of the, for the rest of the year. But 
we all, you know, <laughs> last year, Stuart, John, and I volunteered to pay for it. And um, somehow the book, bookkeeping was kind of loose between the three of us. And we still owe them about 100 bucks from last year. So I would propose that we uh, make a grant for $600, take care of what we owe for last year, and pay for the 500 for this season. So uh, I'm not sure whether we should attach it to Beth's Thank you, grant proposal. Separate. Separate. Um, so, Marion has a question. Yes, Marion, go ahead. So am I remembering correctly, is this basically the 11,500 that we talked about and conditionally approved, but we said was gonna come out of a different budget? Is that what we're talking about here? And is this that same budget or is this, a, I'm, I'm a little confused about- um, Which budget it comes out of? Yeah, I mean, I thought we had talked about sort of, we had made it conditional or sort of like, because we were gonna, finance in a different manner and I, I'm I, I forget the details but I'm trying to so do I I don't remember that yeah Beth, Beth can weigh in on the details go ahead the reason it's still hanging out here yeah. is because is I've got to think yeah um, because um it's supposed to come out of Joe and Stewart's beautification budget yeah as opposed to the community grant budget. Right. So you voted on the community grants and those were all approved, but the 11,500 has, you know, we've been taking it with good faith. We're gonna have plants and um, just waiting for you. The it's gonna be coming out of, it's gonna be coming from the same source. It's just was split up for, for some reason. <laughs> It's coming out of how many priorities are there? Five. Yeah. So it's coming out of a different priority than the community grants. It's coming out of downtown beautification. beautification it is. That's right. In addition to the six hundred dollars for Teagle's rent. So there was a two. Does that answer your question, Mary? I'm just trying to remember how this all fits into our our overall financial picture. In terms of you know what what we've spent and what we have remaining, and I know that we sort of knew that we were going to spend this money. We talk if this is the eleven thousand that we're talking about, we 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 had it set aside. We knew we were going to spend it, but I I thought there was some reason that we ha hadn't done that yet. Like whether it was confusion about whether the town should pay for. It. I feel like there was some other. I'm I'm, other I'm, I'm, very, I'm quite I'm uh, quite positive the town was not going to pay for. It. No, the what happened? Uh, my recollection was that you know, with the community grants, we had seventy thousand dollars, and we had a lot of great things to put that towards. And we saw that this particular grant was something that we were definitely going to do, but that we could kind of put it under a different category. And that we said yes. The answer is yes, but it's you know not going to be under the seventy thousand community grant umbrella. We're going to push it towards something else. And so um, we all you know voted for it yes, and we said we kind of approve it under a different kitty and another day. Um, as far as exactly what category this is coming out of, it's unclear, but at the same time, we do have the funds for it. And it's been, it's, you know, it, John has all along been like, Beth, we are going to approve this. So I think this comes out of- yeah, I think we all agreed we were gonna approve it. I just was trying to get my head around what where we were at in the process today. So that's helpful. Thank you, Greta. I'm also curious, um, you know, given, unfortunately, the, the Book stock not happening. I assume that money is back. It that should is, be. You know, unencumbered at this point. Do we know if that even went out? I assume it was probably not paid out yet. Well, no, sure. um, some of it, I, th I believe some has, but John was meeting with everybody um, over the last week. And so I think when he comes back, he's going to have a more of a fuller report for us to know, um, Greta, exactly where that lands, because I don't know if it's all of it. I, I think it comes under the, the category of the John Spector accounting method. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and John's in London. So I'm sure that uh, when he gets back, he'll have the ideal or perfect answer to these questions. But in the meantime, what we do know is the money is there yeah. and that we should vote on um, uh, approving it. 
So I, I would suggest we do the first one first. Yeah, motion to. Who would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the grant for 11500 Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the 11500 All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? There are no opposed. Motion passed. Okay, now if someone could make a motion about the six hundred dollars. Yeah, did what? everyone there vote? Yeah, uh, because you have to ask because they're on Zoom. Right, did, um, Larry and Mike Green, you both said aye. Yes. Yep. Thank you. So. Next one. Um, motion to approve $600 for the maintenance of Peagle's Landing. Second. Motion to made and seconded to grant $600 to the maintenance of Peagle's Landing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion passed. Thank you all. Okay, what's next? Um, that's it. Adjourn. That's it. Wow, wow. <laughs> we have an NCAA record. <laughs> and also, I guess that's the right motion to. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. This is Takis, Takis Hinaris. I, I don't know most of you, I know Ben, who's my neighbor here. So, we are talking about the beautification of downtown. It's beautiful, that's great. But at the same time, I don't know how the committees work, but I we bring friends all the time up to Woodstock. And everybody's surprised about the status of the Dr. Colburn building, which is really the ugliest place of downtown. Is there something that we can do about it? Because you can put whatever flowers you want, you can put whatever you want to beautify. This is ugly. And this is changing the whole look of downtown. Dr. Colburn. <clears throat> it's a great um, question, and uh, you're yeah, not the me... first to ask it, but I'm going to let somebody else who knows more of the history answer that question. I, I, I can... I can give you a little bit more of the history since I've lived here for over 30 years. Um, huh. Well, when I first moved here, the place was called um, Bentley's. Bentley's. Cabot. And it was owned Cabot. by a couple of gentlemen who lived up in Pomfret. They sold it and it got conglomerated between a doctor, Dr. Coburn, uh, in New York, and another gentleman in New York who's in the restaurant business, Ken Stern. It's a little bit unclear who owns what, but during all this, the interior was changed significantly, but the exterior was totally neglected. And it's up to the pub, and we have, as a community and as various boards, discussed ad nauseum what we could do to motivate the people to do something about their building. You have to remember, it's private property. There's not much, you know, uh, the town could insist on being done, if anything. And so we, we have talked to Ken Stern. We have discussed it with other people. I mean, we have been talking, my personal opinion right now it's the it's the biggest embarrassment we have in town. Thank Without, you. That's what that's. I didn't want to say that, but thank cannot, you. Yes. <laughs> cannot drive or walk through town without going by that disgusting building. Yes. You cannot. And something yes should be done. And I have been saying right along, let's do this, let's do this, but it's still private property, and it's their decision what to be done about it. It would take an enormous amount of money, I believe. To restore it to an acceptable condition <clears throat> or acceptable to the eye anyway and nobody yet i mean I, from what i understand it's up for sale but the, the prices are uh, pretty exorbitant right now so, so there is hope that's what i can tell you <laughs> okay uh, it, maybe it, okay i also have, have any other information uh, orchard's path by the village changes building orchards. Yeah. And they could say they could give them like a $500 bond. Well, I, I've often said that 
the only thing that's left is some sort of legislation, but it gets a little tricky. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody's enthusiastic about taking that route. The only other thing. The only other yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, would have to pass, you know, the uh, town fathers that do that. But right now, <laughs> it's like it's ugly. Everybody knows it's ugly. It's it's uh, an eyesore, to say the least. But it's a private property. And there's not a lot. Larry, I don't know if you can jump in there. I haven't been a lawyer. I guess not. <laughs> but that's what I can tell you, Travis. I, hope that so I wanted to, I wanted to yeah. add to that, yeah. which is that yes, in, I get to meet you. In the conversations that we've had also, obviously, there's so many things infrastructure-wise that the town has to worry about right now. And yeah. With the, the money, the limited money that we have, um, <clears throat> we've kind of made a decision not to give to uh, private businesses that, that it doesn't really affect um, and come back to the general community. We just don't have the money to do that. And it, it raises a lot of problems. Why this person and not that person? So it is it is an eyesore and it's a shame, but it's not not within this jurisdiction to say we're going to. Okay, no, no, I, I understand that. But the point is that if you look at it, I'm not looking for funding, right? But what was the only, the only, I mean, George just mentioned briefly, the possibility of um, having some kind of legislation, legislation um, to force them to fix it. In other words, if you go to downtown by the green, because we have some friends by the green, um, yeah. for them to change their roof, they cannot do anything except the roof remains the way it was before, which is a wooden, wooden, wooden basically, piece of, for, for the roof. Why don't we force them with such, such um, a legislation to, to, to fix the building? Why don't we do the same thing in, in, in a similar way? You know, I mean, this might be a good question to bring to Larry, if you know, but my understanding is, you know, it's like, is there a carrot or a stick? And there is a stick, but it doesn't seem like the town wants to use it. And I don't know what the stick is, but I do believe there are some rules, but it's it's not being implemented. Is that right, Larry? You don't know? Okay, I don't, we don't know, but I believe there's something, but I don't know. Okay, but th thanks a lot. Thanks. Everybody's talking about it, so I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you know, hopefully at some point, sometime in the future, when some of the other issues that seem to be more pertinent and uh, important to the town and, and the infrastructure and other things, um, we can get to the point where we say, okay, enough is enough. Let's do something about it. But I don't think we're there yet. I'd like to be there, but I don't think we're there yet. Anything else? Thank you for your comments. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all.